This is section 232. We're going to solve quadratic equations. So we're going to solve quadratic equations using the zero product principle. Now the zero product principle says if you multiply any two numbers a and b and it equals zero, you can assume that a equals zero, b equals zero, or both equals zero. We're going to use this idea to be able to solve quadratic equations when we factor it. And remember, factoring means multiplication. So if I can take the statement and express it as multiplication, I can use the zero product principle to solve it. So in this equation here, 7x squared minus 11x minus 10 equals negative 14. It's quadratic, so I want it to equal zero. So I'm going to add 14 to both sides. Now I want to see, does it factor? So I'm going to do a times c. So I get 28. Factors of 28 that add to a negative 11 is going to be 4 and 7 if they both have a negative. So I can rewrite that middle term as the minus 4 and the minus 7. Now we do factor by grouping. So there's an x in common. And then there's only a negative in common. So we're left with 7x minus 4. Now there's 7x minus 4 in common. So I can factor out the 7x minus 4. And that leaves me with x. And then that, I know there's no 1 there, but we can just write that 1. And this equals 0. So now for the zero product principle, this is my a, this is my b. And since it equals 0, I can assume right the whole a equals 0 or b equals 0 so I can say 7x minus 4 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0 I can add 4 divide by 7 I get x equals 4 over 7 over over here I can add 1 and I get x equals 1 now you can always take these values and plug them back into the original equation. In for x, you just enter your calculator to check if it's true. This next one, so I want it to equal 0, so I'm going to add 4 to the other side. So now a times c, that gives me 1 times 6 is 6. Factors of 6 that add to 5, so we get 2 and 3. So a squared plus 2a plus 3a plus 6 equals 0. Factor by grouping, there's an a in common. And then over here, factor out 3. And so you're going to get a plus 2 and a whoops, plus 3 equals 0. Now remember zero product principle, this is your a, this is your b, and so because a times b equals zero, I can assume that a equals zero and b equals zero, so I can say a plus two equals zero and a plus three equals zero. Subtract two, subtract three, there are my answers. Let's look at one more. Now, for this one, it's not quadratic, which is OK, but you can still use the principle of factoring to solve it. Now, it's already in that factor by grouping form, so I can break that apart. There's an 8 in common, and then r squared. So I'm left with r minus 8. And then over here, there's nothing in common, so I can say 1. Now there's an r minus 8 in common, and so I now get 8r squared plus 1 equals 0. Now the zero product principle. So solving this, I can set a equal to 0. I can set b equal to 0. Now I can't factor that more, but I can solve it, subtract 1 divide by 8. Now if I square root both sides, I'm going to get an imaginary number. 
So r equals plus or minus, and then we're going to have the square root of 1 over 8i, because I can't, I'm taking out the negative out of the, the square root. And then I have a, the square root of 1 is 1, and then 8 is 2 root 2. And so I can rationalize that even further. And so that looks like that's going to be root 2 over 4i plus or minus. And then add 8. And so in this one, I got some imaginary values, which is OK. Now this last one, I know I said that the zero product principle is a times b equals zero, but it actually can be extended to as many variables as you want. This could be a times b times c times d times e equals zero. And you can assume that a equals zero, b equals zero, c equals zero, d equals zero, e equals zero, and so on and so forth. So I have a string of factors here and I can assume each one of these factors equals 0. So add 2 to both sides, subtract 5 on both sides, add 1 to both sides, subtract 2 on both sides. And so those would be my solutions. So, to conclude today's lesson, we learned how to solve quadratic equations using the zero product principle. And what is the zero product principle? It's saying that if you have two factors being multiplied in the equal zero, you can assume that either the first factor is zero, the sector factor of the zero, or you can assume both are zero. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.